All right, so in this tutorial, let's set up the development environment for writing JavaScript code. We're gonna write some JavaScript code in this course, so we need a development environment, right? What is the development environment that we need to choose for our, uh, for our code? Typically, when it comes to languages like Java or C Sharp, there's a bunch of installations that you will have to do, right? So you need to download the JVM or some runtime environment, set it up, set up the path, and all that stuff. Thankfully, you don't have to do that in this course. I can guarantee, almost guarantee, that your machine, your desktop or your laptop already has the JavaScript development environment installed. Can you guess what it is? Well, it's the web browser, like I told you. The web browser is the runtime which you can use for JavaScript, so any web browser should do. I will, however, ask you to use Firefox for this course, or at least that's what I will use. You can probably follow along using a different browser, uh, but I'm gonna choose Firefox because Firefox has certain tools that is very handy when it comes to writing these uh, you know, um, scripts and having them execute. So let me demonstrate how to do that. First step, download and install Firefox. So you can go to the Mozilla website or just Google Firefox, get the installer, download it and install it. Once you've installed it, open the application and click on this menu icon over here and uh, you should see an option called Developer. So you click on it and click on Toggle Tools. And this is going to open the developer tools for Firefox. Most of the modern browsers today come with some sort of developer tools installed. So there will be an option for you to open the developer tools in the browser itself. It's present in almost all browsers. Um, what developer tools lets you do is look at the page that's being rendered. You can look at the HTML that caused the page to render and also look at some of the JavaScript associated with it. You can debug the JavaScript and also add new JavaScript commands, right? You can write new JavaScript commands that work on that page. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna use Firefox as our development environment. Right? So we're gonna use Firefox to write our JavaScript code and uh, we're gonna run it using this. So there's not gonna be a page that we're gonna write. Okay, there's no HTML page. We're gonna start with this blank page, whatever Firefox starts with. But we're gonna write JavaScript and we're gonna execute it and Firefox has features to execute arbitrary JavaScript statements. So the first way to run JavaScript in Firefox is by using the console. Okay, so there is this console tab in the developer tools, you have a bunch of tabs here. You see inspector, console, debugger, and so on. Click on the console tab, okay? So when you click on the console tab, you'll get this window over here and you have this prompt-like thing, okay? So you can type in commands here and it is going to execute that, all right? So I'm going to type in a simple command called console.log. Let me type this and I'll explain what that does. So I'm gonna type console.log and uh, it's, an, it's, an, uh, it's a method, and then it takes in an argument, which is a string. I'm gonna pass in a string, hello world, then end it with a semicolon. If I hit enter, you see here what happens. There is this thing here called hello world that gets printed on the console, okay? And there is this thing called undefined. Ignore that for a bit, I'll tell you what that means. But uh, what you've done is you've executed JavaScript by this one statement. So console is a global object that's available to you, and log is a method of that object. So if you're familiar with C++ or Java, this thing should be uh, familiar to you, right? So it's object.method, and uh, the method takes in an argument, which is a string. And uh, the string happens to be hello world. And what this method does is it prints whatever you send as an argument to the console, okay? And that's the reason why hello world was printed over here. All right, so this is one way of running JavaScript in Firefox. There is another way of doing this, and uh, this is by using something called Scratchpad. Okay, so open the menu here, developer again, and you see here there's this entry called Scratchpad on the menu. So click on that, and you get a new window that opens up. Okay, you see here, this is the Scratchpad window. Now, look at the comments here. So you, you must be familiar with the comments, right? This is how comments are written in C++ or Java or C Sharp. So the comment says, 
This is a JavaScript scratch pad. Enter some JavaScript and then right click or choose execute from the, uh, choose from the execute menu, right? You can execute JavaScript by typing it over here. So let me clear out these comments and I'm gonna type the same code that I entered before. I wanna print something to the console. So I'm gonna say console.log hello world again. And uh, now here I have a button called run. I'm gonna click on that. There you go. Hello world again is printed on the console. So what I did here is no different from what I did over here in this prompt. But the difference is in the kind of code that I can execute. If I'm typing JavaScript code in the prompt here, I'm basically executing commands one after another. Okay, whereas if I type code over here, I have a bunch of code that gets executed all at once. So I can actually make a copy of this thing. And um, I can say, hello, JavaScript. And then I click run. So hello world again, got printed twice. One was from the first run and the second was from the second run. And then hello JavaScript gets printed. If I have to do that, I'm gonna have to enter multiple commands in the console in order to get that to work. So these are the two ways in which you can run JavaScript and try things out in Firefox. And this is what we're gonna use. I am a big fan of the scratch pad view because it lets you enter a bunch of commands, a bunch of uh, lines of JavaScript code and then execute it in one go. We're gonna need something like that when we write some advanced stuff in JavaScript. So this is what we're gonna use most of the time in this course. And uh, one thing that I wanna highlight is the difference between the two ways of executing JavaScript code. Remember I told you JavaScript is a scripting language and I gave a parallel to uh, the scripting that you do on an operating system, like a batch file or a shell file. So this is very similar. You can either enter commands on the console or you can create a bunch of commands in a file and then execute it at once. So I hope you see the parallel there, right? So this is very similar to running shell script commands. Only thing is we are doing JavaScript in this case. So make sure you have your scratch pad open when you follow along the lessons in this course. You're gonna be writing code using the scratch pad.